Hello everyone, this is Robert Cornelius and today I'm going to be showing you how I created this image and how I'm going to go about doing that is I have already done a screen record while I was editing the image and I've sped that footage up and so I'm going to essentially watch back that footage and attempt to tell you what the heck I was doing. Uh, I've edited this image over a long period of time so I'm going to have to try and remember what I was doing and why, and I will do my best to explain every step as quickly as I can. So let's get started. Okay, so first things first, I was messing around with different backgrounds um, and, you know, deciding where to place her, and then I was pen tooling her out. I find that is my favorite way to cut people out. You just get a really nice hard edge, and I knew I would be adding edge lighting later, so I wanted it to be nice and crisp. So I pen tooled that. And I'm still just kind of messing around with the look and feel, deciding what direction to go in. I originally used this sort of spaceship looking thing, but I decided I wanted to go more typical cyberpunk and use the like downtown city with all the neon lights and whatnot. So at this point, I'm still kind of in the experimentation stages. I do love lens flares and there are some subtle use of flares in this, but not as many as I thought. Um, and those are from Raw Exchange. You can find the link down below. So here I'm still, like I said, just trying things out. You know, you, you kind of got to try and fail and try and fail until you land on something you like. For a while, I had made this ring light on the floor, which that light is from Spiffy Gear, and it is pretty spiffy. Uh, I had originally thought I was going to replace it with this, like, nice round you know fake light that I added in but I ended up liking the angular you know chunky look of the actual light so a little bit later I put that back in the glasses looked a little funky so I decided to kind of squish that farther lens in a little bit and this is where I start adding the edge light I do that in the layer styles uh, using it's actually an inner shadow because then you can kind of have it come from one direction, as opposed to using an inner glow, which comes from all the sides. You can do the inner shadow and change the blending mode and the color, and so you can get these nice edge lights coming from one direction. So now I rendered some fog in the filters, and then I did some sort of a pixelate filter on that. And then I did a vertical motion blur to get these sort of streaky light textures which I end up toning down a lot, and later I, I build up more texture on those lights, but that was, again, still just experimenting with things and seeing what I liked. So it, it is fun to start with those fog, rendered fog clouds uh, in the filters, and you know you can apply a bunch of different filters to them. And So at this point, I switched to the other background. This is also from Raw Exchange, and this is actually all CG. And it's pretty cool because when you download the file, each of the lights in the background is on its own layer. So you can actually turn on and off any of the lights and affect them individually and decide which ones you want, which ones you don't. And you can even do layer masks. Like you can see here, I'm kind of adding in some lights from one layer, but not all of them. And you can adjust the color of each light individually. I just add a hue saturation adjustment layer, and then you can slide the top slider to get different colors on each light. So yeah, it's a pretty, pretty cool thing. So I had a lot of fun messing around with that and kind of building the perfect background out of that for what I wanted. And then here, just tweaking the lights a bit, still deciding where things should be. And now I'm going into blurring the background. I like to do that with my composite images, especially when they're closer like this, because it, it just sort of separates your subject from the background and gives more depth and makes them pop a bit more. And I actually stretched out the actual background of the picture I took, which was very dark, but it had kind of an interesting grain texture going on. And I liked the way that looked on top of everything. So I stretched that out, turned it down a bit. I think fairly soon I decided that it should be, yeah, it should be a vertical image. It was just looking kind of cramped from the top. And because it's a cyberpunk thing, I kind of liked the height of the city and wanted to focus on this middle part a bit. So I changed the crop and then I'm just adjusting some of my layers that didn't line up anymore. And then adding that flare back in from earlier, now that I have a motivated reason for it to be there. And 
blurring the background a bit more. Since it seems the image is a little closer now, I wanted the background to be even blurrier to give her more separation. And darkening the background so some of those lights can pop a little more. Change in the color. I like those reds to be a bit more pink. Those vibrant pinks are a very cyberpunk sort of tone, so I wanted to play those up. That's another technique I like to use, what you just saw, where I'll fill a layer with a color, and then you set it to the difference blending mode, and it gives your highlights and shadows an opposite tone, and it, it's when you apply it, it's way too crazy, so then I turn it down to like 3%, and it just adds an interesting color to your overall shadows and highlights that's pretty fun to mess around with. Often throughout my images, I'll start at the bottom and just kind of turn all my layers on, see what each one's doing and tweak things. So that's what you just saw there when it kind of went crazy. And that's when I decided to go back to the original ring light uh, that's on the actual floor in the actual picture. So using using the light from the photo and duplicating it, uh, I selected the, the white parts of it and I'm doing some vertical motion blurs to give it kind of this you know, vertical glow coming off the light. And those lights are pretty cool. You can kind of adjust them in a bunch of different ways. They come apart like like Legos or something. They're pretty cool. And adding more edge light. Again with the layer styles and uh, inner shadow. And now just doing some painting. It's a little hard to see when it's so sped up and it's pretty subtle. I tend to do this a lot where I zoom way in and end up painting all these itty bitty details that are probably going to go unseen for the most part but that's my favorite part is really digging in there deep and and painting in you know all the little hairs and the highlights on things and just uh you know adding more depth and and dimension to the to the image so i get out my wacom tablet and uh go to town so yeah here i'm Highlighting different things, you know, I, I like to spend a lot of time detailing on the face Obviously, you know for most of my work It's of a person and their face is generally the most important part. So I like to draw attention there So, you know the higher Area of concentrated detail you have the more Chance you have of your audience looking there. So I like to really detail the face and I spent a good amount of time on the glasses and the hair and I keep coming back to that area to add more highlights to the glasses and things. And adjusting some color a little bit here and there. I usually paint with white when I'm doing my my detail painting but sometimes for an image like this you can see I've, I'll select pink or I'll select teal depending on what side and kind of play up the colors of the background and blend her in. As for with all my work, I tend to add dust particles. I just really love the atmosphere it gives it and any chance I have in a composite to put something over the subject and the background, it just sort of tells your eye like, oh, these are all in the same place because, you know, there's these dust particles in the air and they're covering up her in the background. And so it just sort of helps to blend everything together and, and give them a, a more cohesive look. So I am kind of obsessed with dust particles. Here I'm altering the color, kind of pushing the teals a bit more. The blues were looking a little blue, so I added more yellow in there just to get the, get the teals popping. And plus teal is opposite of pink, and it's a very complementary color in the, in the whole cyberpunk spectrum. So I was playing with those. And brightening up the ground a bit more, messing with the ring light. And then this is where I had a ton of fun. Uh, adding in more neon lights. So I just was pulling them in and setting them to screen and then adding the same blur I did to the background so they would match. I used a lens blur for that just because I like the quality it gives it. And then I just place them around and kind of decide where, where I want the lights. Those lights on the right were from the original background but they were cropped off but I like the way they look so I brought those back in. And placing this casino sign. This one says La Salsa. But again, I like the, the teal and pink look of that. So I thought about maybe putting some in the foreground, but I didn't want to distract too much from her. So I stuck that back in the background. And yeah, it was a lot of fun to add all these little details in there and sort of build up this 
cyberpunk city world with all the technology and glowing lights. I also realized that she was too close to the left side of the frame, so I centered her a bit more. And then I decided to take this technology, whatever computer plate motherboard thing this is, and add that to the lights coming off the floor. Um, I, for no reason other than I thought it would look cool, <laughs> and uh, I'm pretty pleased with it. So what I was doing is I was placing it and uh, transforming the perspective a bit to make it match and line up, and then I was doing a high pass filter and setting it to overlay. So you're just kind of getting the texture of it, but you can still see what's behind it. And then I used a layer mask and a gradient tool to kind of fade them down so they're brightest and uh, most, you can see them the best at the bottom closest to the light and then they kind of fade out as they go up. So it's almost like this light is some sort of force field or transporter something, something cool and futuristic. You can decide. And just adding in more neon lights. For a while I had some right behind her face. When you're zoomed way in, I thought it looked kind of cool and gave her some separation from the background, but then it got a little, little too clustered and I got rid of that one behind her face. So here I'm doing a technique that I use a lot where I make it black and white so I can check my values. And this way, especially for an image like this that has such vibrant colors, you might think that she's separating well from the background, like, oh, it's really pink right here and it's kind of bluish behind her, so she pops off. But then once you put it in black and white, you can see, you know, if everything's a similar value, it's kind of muddy and flat. She doesn't pop off the background. So I look at it in here and now I'm uh, painting on an overlay layer behind her to lighten the background. And I use a fog brush to, you know, create more atmosphere. And then also now she separates so much better because she's in this black leather and the black hair and the black glasses. So by painting light behind her, it just kind of separates her forward and drops the background farther away. So that's something I do with most pictures at some point is switch to black and white and make sure I'm getting my values right. And adding more neon signs in, just kind of trying to find a good balance where it's not too cluttered, but it does look like there's a lot going on and you know, there's a crazy city of technology back there. So I periodically go back to that and add more. I am back in black and white, just, you know, again, checking the values, seeing is her face separated from the background. And uh, I th think I still get rid of that light behind her, right behind the glasses, if I remember correctly. Adding more fog, just creating that atmosphere. And then I decided that the, her elbow area wasn't separating very much, so I used color to pop that off, made it purple behind the teal so you can see that better. And then I went back into the original background before I had blurred it and decided to grab some of these cool pipes and things to mess around with putting in the foreground. I wanted it to start to look, like I said, a little more busy, not too busy, you know, you gotta find a balance, but just keep kind of puzzling things in and adding more depth and dimension and detail. And by having things in the foreground that are out of focus and the background that are out of focus, it just makes the image look more deep and uh, I feel like it almost makes her look a little sharper because there's blurry stuff all around her. And, you know, one of the things with the cyberpunk theme is that it's this crazy dystopian city and there's just so much going on and everyone's all packed in. So I thought it might be nice if, if the image got a little claustrophobic and there were some, you know, pipes and tubes and cords and extra technology just kind of cluttering things up. So some of these are the pipes from the background that I pen tooled out. And then some of these, I just set my brush to a hard round brush. And then I would pen tool either a bendy line or a straight line and right click and hit stroke path uh, to make these like, you know, cords and pipes and things. And then I used layer styles to add inner shadows to give them some roundness and dimension. So they weren't just a super flat shape. And again, blurring them and just kind of placing things around. I think at one point I added a little too much and then I go back in and move some around and get rid of a few things, but you kind of just got to try it and step back and see, see what you like. I think I even at some point called it a night and came back the next morning and was like, okay, this is too much. Let me move some things around. So still just playing with placement. 
got rid of that big one in the bottom right corner. And I think I yep, switched left corner to the right corner. And then that kind of balanced with the one in the top left corner. So just, just finding a composition I like. Lightening the background a bit more. At this point, it's pretty much done and I'm just, just doing little tweaks, you know, tiny little details back on the hair and the glasses and just last minute things that I wanted to draw attention to. Just painting with white on a regular layer, doing some sharpening with a high pass filter. Decided to use that pipe I'd cut out to just add a little more texture and there weren't a lot of prominent pipes in the background so I wanted to continue that theme throughout. They're blurry but it's they're back there. And then doing some chromatic aberration, however the heck you say that. So in layer styles you can turn off one of the color channels and then I'm using the lens correction to kind of screw with the perspective of it and then it, it adds that like green and pink edge. So here's the original image and in a minute you will see it fade to the finished one so you can kind of see where it was where it ended up and yeah that is the image I ended up with and that is generally in a nutshell what the heck I did to end up here so thank you so much for watching I hope this was helpful if you have any questions I'm always here thanks for watching